USB-C is everywhere these days, which is great, but it can also be super annoying when you want to hook up to an external display. If you've got a laptop with nothing but USB-C ports, you definitely know this pain and probably had to buy some kind of dongle to make your setup work. Maybe you're more advanced and you've got a whole docking system like this Thunderbolt 5 one from Ugreen. For years, that's been a great solution, but now even these are often removing HDMI and DisplayPort in favor of just USB-C for displays. So now what? Are you going to throw a dongle on the back of your nice new dock just to hook up to a traditional monitor? No, there is a better way. I've got three different cables here today that could be the perfect solution for these exact pain points. I didn't know these existed until just recently, so I'm sure that many of you will be in a similar spot. But Cameron, I hear many of you calling in the distance, don't you know USB-C monitors exist? Yes, of course. Monitors that offer USB-C input and therefore let you use a simple USB-C to USB-C cable are a great option as well. However, for many years, USB-C monitors have been harder to find and typically far more expensive. Today, they've been coming down in price and becoming easier to find, but monitors last a long time, and I'd hate for you to run out and buy a new monitor to replace a perfectly good one just because of the ports. So let's see what solutions we have here today. The first cable I have today is probably the most common one you'd be looking for. It's a USB-C to HDMI cable. For most people out there, HDMI is probably the display cable type that you're most familiar with and probably the one you're using today. This one in particular is HDMI 2.1, which means it can go all the way up to 8K 60 Hertz, or it can support 4K at up to 240 Hertz. So it is wildly capable for today and for the future. Ugreen cables only come in these simple black and silver colors, but they are a nice braided material. They're on the stiffer side though, which is typical for display cables like this, but overall the quality is nice, with one small exception. And for that, we've got to go to camera two. I bet you didn't know I had a camera two, and up until just this moment, I didn't actually have one. But I needed to call out, Ugreen, the cable ties on here, you're cutting corners. This is a little silly. So I thought that these were normal cable ties when I first unboxed this. Then I actually took one off, and I realized it's just one of your normal cable ties cut into smaller pieces. This is what they're supposed to look like, and this is what you shipped in this box, just two of them. Now, I appreciate you trying to cut your costs as much as possible, as long as that's to bring our prices down as much as possible, but this is just a little ridiculous. If you really need to do it, just give us one instead of two, one full-size one instead of two half ones, and I think we all win. But anyway, let's get back to the regular video. This 8K model comes in a 2 meter or 6.6 .6 foot version, plus there is an even longer 10 foot version available as well. These cables aren't cheap, starting at $39.99 and $49.99, but can be a good investment into getting rid of those pesky dongles once and for all. Also, if the specs on this particular model seem a bit excessive for your use cases, they would be for mine, there's also a cheaper version with HDMI 2.0, which can still handle up to 4K 60Hz, but comes in a good bit cheaper. Next up is a very similar cable, also from Ugreen, this time offering USB-C to DisplayPort, but also with one added wrinkle. Now, my cable here is DisplayPort 2.1, which is the latest spec and can go all the way up to 16K at 30 hertz, which is mind boggling. If anyone watching this video owns a 16K display, please comment down below because that's crazy. It can also do 8K 120 hertz, so it's a very, very capable cable. It has a similar design and materials as before, and also like before, you can get a lower tier version of this cable if you don't quite need this much capability. In this case, a DisplayPort 1.4 option is available, which can still go up to 8K 60 hertz, the same as this exact HDMI cable, and for a good bit less than this version. The 2.1 version comes in a 1 meter or 2 meter version for around $40, and the 1.4 version has those sizes plus a 10 foot version for about half the price, though the prices of all of these fluctuate over time. But what about that wrinkle that I mentioned? Well, when it comes to DisplayPort specifically, you've got a new option introduced, which is whether your cable is unidirectional or bidirectional. So can data flow in just one direction or in both? 
Most of this video has been focused on using the USB-C output from something like a laptop into a monitor with DisplayPort or HDMI. If you get a unidirectional version of these cables, that's the direction, USB-C to DisplayPort. If you get a bi-directional cable, then you can also use the cable in the other direction, which is perfect if you have a desktop computer with a DisplayPort output that you want to use with one of those fancy USB-C monitors. If that's your plan, make sure you get one labeled specifically as bi-directional. If that's not your use case, but it may be in the future, getting one just in case so that it's ready for either use in the future could be smart. Just note, at this time, this DisplayPort 2.1 cable only seems to be available in unidirectional, so you'd have to go with the lower tier DisplayPort 1.4 model if you need both, and also bi-directional cables are slightly more expensive. Finally, we have the last option. This one's a little bit different. This is Anker's USB-C to HDMI with power delivery. Yeah, so this cable not only lets you connect up to a monitor, but it also provides power back to your device. How it works is up where the HDMI port is, you also have a USB-C port for charging. So now with a single cable, you can send a data signal in one direction and receive a charge back in the other direction. It is a very cool solution for some rather niche use cases. I'm sure there's more ways that this cable could be used. Let me know if you've got any creative ideas, but the biggest ones that I can think of are connecting up to a simple single monitor desk setup with just one cable. So you get this thing set up with your desk and you've got power attached and then just start your day by plugging into the USB-C cable and you can spend the whole day working on your single monitor without any need to plug in a second cable for power. A secondary big use case for this would be a USB-C phone. This could be for streaming content on your phone, but putting it up on a bigger screen like a television, all while keeping your phone charged. Or if you're in content creation, you could be using this as a way to monitor your video as you're filming something and still be charging at the same time so that you never run out of juice. Not everyone needs this cable, but some of you out there will immediately be like, yes, give me one of those right now, which is why I had to buy it as soon as I saw it. The cable itself is also braided and it's even made of some recycled materials. It uses the same plug as the Anchor Nano cable, which is one of my absolute favorites. It is only capable of 4K 60 Hertz, so it's a little bit less than the other two ones that I've looked at. You do sacrifice a little bit of the internal bandwidth for the power capability. Now it's capable of providing 140 watts of power delivery, which is plenty for even some of the most power hungry laptops. There are three foot versions and six foot versions, and they're available for around $30. Honestly, the only downside with this cable is getting the power to that HDMI port, because now you've got your regular cable going from the display to your device, and you need to also run a separate cable from your display down to an outlet or some sort of power source, which depending on your setup may be easier said than done. Other than that though, it's pretty perfect and I love it. So tell me, what do you think of these three cables? Am I just behind the curve learning about these or are they new to you as well? If you'd like to pick any of them up for yourself, I've got links down in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe goes a long way and will help us in our goal of reaching 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.